when we uh, had the chance to bring Spider-Man into the MCU with Homecoming, it was really exploring two things that had never been explored before in, uh, in the Spidey movies. One was making him much younger, that he's in his early years of high school and dealing with what it's like to be that young and to have these powers and, and to really relish the high school setting. And the other one was that it's set within a, the broader Marvel universe and that there are other heroes there. So for the first few films, it was always, how do we do things that have never been done before? So it did not occur to us to do a new Goblin story or to do an Oscorp story or to do Doc Ock or anyone that had been done before, which is why Vulture and Mysterio were really the key, the key characters. Um, and even as we were doing that, and I've been saying for years, long before anybody asked me what I thought, um, that you don't, can't get better than Alfred Molina as Doc Ock. That stepping into those shoes would be very, very difficult. And it wouldn't be fun to find a way, if you were ever gonna bring Doc Ock back, that it would have to be, that it would have to be Alfred Molina. And in early development on, on this third Homecoming movie, um, we realized that thanks to the MCU, there's a way to do that. One of the reasons we wanted him to be as young as possible is so that we could explore the high school years. And uh, very much like the Harry Potter franchise did, each book is a year in school. So initial ideas were, yes, we have sophomore year and junior year and senior year. And we've stuck to that of sort of, he's had amazing adventures in between those years. Far From Home ended up being sort of over a summer of that, and, and, and No Way Home very much is his senior year. And just as his senior year is starting, when he's figuring out what he wants to do with his life and where he and MJ and Ned want to go off to college together, of course, coincides exactly when Mysterio outs his identity. And the worst possible thing uh, happens to Peter Parker, that his identity is revealed, He's being framed for all the terrible things that happen in Far From Home. And all he really wants to do is start his senior year and have a normal kid experience. And that push and pull between being a hero and being a regular, a regular kid. Sitting in a room, uh, in this case, it was a conference room at Marvel Studios with the team is always my favorite part of the process where anything is possible. We knew coming out of Far From Home that we didn't want to shy away from the fact that his identity is now revealed, it's out there. And that was certainly always the starting point. And with Eric Summers and Chris McKenna and our director, John Watts, and, and um, uh, Amy Pascal, we sat and just started brainstorming. What happens next? What happens to him as he starts to, as he swings away from Madison Square Garden where that big, uh, big TV screen outed his identity? And how does his life change and get turned upside down? And more importantly, how does it affect his friends? You know, Peter Parker can handle a lot, but when he starts to see his friends uh, being affected by his actions unfairly, that, that really um, uh, is emotionally draining for him. Uh, so, so that was always early on where it was. And, and, and we had a lot of fun dis discussions. It's always, you know, having a discussion of what, oh, you know what would be cool? It'd be cool if we did this, it'd be cool if we did that. As I said, I'd always been saying, yeah, if we ever brought Ock back, it would be, you'd have to bring Alfred Molina in. Um, and how would, you, how would you do that? And we thought it might be fun someday, but as we started working on really tracking the story of Tom Holland as Peter Parker and what would he do and what does he has access to, what does he have access to in the MCU to undo this? And we realized, well, he knows who Dr. Strange is. Dr. Strange is down there on Bleecker Street in Greenwich Village. He could just go ask him to fix it all, just magically fix it all. Just turn back time or do a spell or do something so that my life can go back to normal. And as you might imagine, uh, it's not that easy. And things start to go wrong because he starts to realize, okay, well, Dr. Strange has a spell of forgetting, but he doesn't want everybody to forget. He wants Aunt May to know and Happy to know and MJ to know and Ned to know. He's not by himself in our universe. He's got confidants and he doesn't want to lose that. So he starts screwing up the spell and Dr. Strange finally has to shut it down and say, never mind, kids, sorry, I never should even try this. Um, uh, you're just going to have to deal with it. But unfortunately, even in those little moments where a spell was going awry, 
we slowly start to realize that instead of making people forget that he was, that Peter Parker was Spider-Man, the spell went awry so that everybody in any universe who knew Peter Parker was Spider-Man came into our world. What's such a, an honor uh, working in Marvel Studios is getting to watch storytellers, whether they're actors, whether they're directors, whether they're writers, whether they're the other creative producers, grow and change and evolve over the years. Um, and John Watts is an amazing example of that. He did a great film called Cop Car, very small, but very character oriented, which is really what got him on our radar for Homecoming. And now seeing him grow through Homecoming and then Far From Home and now with No Way Home, which is by far the most ambitious Spider-Man film ever made, um, seeing how he's grown into that role and really now has, be, has gone from, a, uh, from an excited newcomer to an excited uh, expert, uh, which, is, uh, which is fun to watch. And he's now handling these tremendous action scenes um, with a skill that now other filmmakers are looking up to and wanting to learn from, which is just fun now as a, as a am I becoming an elder statesman? Uh, maybe I am, uh, to now sit back and watch that. Uh, is, is really amazing. When I met with Amy Pascal and first approached her about joining forces to do a Spider-Man movie together and set him in the MCU, um, and when we got her blessing and the blessing of Sony and Tom Rothman came on board and, and believed in it, it, there was a lot of pressure, right? There's one thing getting getting people to, to say yes. It's another thing now delivering on what the heck you were talking about. And the first step on that is casting and, and is saying, okay, let's find the youngest um, Peter Parker who we can grow with and who can do scenes with these other Marvel heroes for the first time. And we knew that Tony Stark was gonna be a big part of that. And Civil War was already shooting at the time. And we weren't sure we were gonna be able to to cast Peter Parker and include him in the initial round of photography on Civil War. Um, but we wanted to make every effort to do that. So yes, we flew, I think, about five, five uh, actors in and had them do readings with, with Robert Downey Jr. And it was his um, graciousness, and he's always so gracious, particularly with other, with other actors, uh, with his time. And that we narrowed it down there uh, with that reading, and then we did one more with Chris Evans. And it became very apparent that Tom Holland was not just uh, uh, an amazing Peter Parker, but he incredibly was an amazing, no pun intended, Spider-Man, because he had both the uh, abilities of a great actor and the abilities of a great uh, a gymnast and stunt performer, which is, was just an added bonus, which continues to, uh, to uh, blow us away and surprise us. Yeah, I remember he did a giant flip right in front of Evans during that reading and threw Evans off. He couldn't believe what he just saw in front of him. Um, and as I've said, that dynamic between a very young Tom Holland um, interacting with Robert Downey Jr. for the first time was exactly the dynamic we wanted between a young Peter Parker interacting with Tony Stark for the first time. And seeing our Peter grow and grow out of that, um, the shadow of Iron Man as we saw him start to do in Far From Home in which he completely does now in uh, No Way Home and really become his own, his own hero. Uh, 